Good evening, everyone. I'm so excited. I just want to share a um, quick testimony that I had received. Um, the young lady sent sent it to my phone, and I wasn't even going to look at my phone before I came in here, but then I had to turn it, uh, turn down the volume. And um, of course, we've been praying with um, the Evans family, and um, I don't know if you all remember, but um, one of the things that she had shared was that about five years ago um, her husband had gotten a little um, frustrated and he um, pretty much walked away from the Lord I mean he didn't want to hear any preaching he didn't want to have anything to do with it and um, ever since she's been you know of course sharing the testimonies about their child with um, with us of course he's been witnessing the power of God there and so she uh, sent me a message saying that just a few days ago he sat down with her and listened to one of the messages on marriage um, that was preached through this ministry um, and that was the first time in a really long time that he was open to hearing the word and so I praise God for that I'm just so excited <laughs> so so excited um, just to see how the Lord is really really moving in that family and I just want to share this this is for all of my sisters in Christ whether you're married or wanting to be married um, at some point this is very very key um, when she first contacted us um, she was in a very desperate place spiritually and um, she was turning to the Lord for for help and she wanted direction and um, as she talked to Brother Bolden and I, the Lord gave us a lot of things to share with her specifically for her situation. And everything that she was instructed to do, she did it. And you see the result of that in all the praise reports that are going forth in her obedience to the Lord. Um, we were just mere vessels because he could have used anybody, but for whatever reason he chose to use um, us through this ministry to do it but the main part is the fact that she's been obedient to the Word of God and obedient in what the Lord has instructed her to do and a big part of that was um, being able to forgive because apparently you know there was some friction there things happen in marriage where we always have an opportunity to um, have unforgiveness or bitterness or whatever the case but we have to make a decision through whatever that we're gonna follow the word no matter what because the word clearly tells us to forgive um, the Lord is our example he renews mercies to us and we have to extend those same mercies and we have plenty of opportunities in marriage let me tell you um, because we're talking about in marriage that person that we've vow to spend the rest of our lives with and so um, with that you know there's plenty of opportunities for offense but it's just as many opportunities for forgiveness for brand new mercies for prayer for teaming up against the real enemy recognizing who that is and so that was one of the things that you know when I, I shared with her um, in Peter Ephesians and in, in Ephesians about you know the wife's role in the marriage and um, she immediately said she knew that was something that she needed to work on because what I share with her is that, you know, if your husband is in a place that he's having a difficult time hearing any preachers, he's not going to a church or anything, he needs to see the word at work through you. He needs to see the power of God changing you so that he can see God. And that's what we have to realize, even if it's not in marriage, sometimes we're the only Bible that people get to read. And so what message are we sending them? You know, that's the question. Am, am I really sharing the power of God with people and letting them know that, you know, hey, maybe at one time I did have the nastiest attitude ever, but the Lord changed that in me? Did, you know, am I sending this message that, you know, maybe at one time I was willfully living in sin, but the Lord changed that in me? Is that the message that we're sending to people that, we serve a God that is powerful enough to break yokes, to break bondages, to loose us, to deliver us, to set us free, and to give us the power to live according to his word. 
And so that's what I see in that situation and, and in other situations, but this one is fresh and new to all of us. And so I just wanted to share that, you know, that it's something to be excited about, but it's also an opportunity for us to look at ourselves and to ask ourselves, you know, are we being obedient to the word that the Lord has given us for our specific situations? You know, are we being obedient to the word? Are we considering other people who are watching our lives as we live for the Lord? Or are we just living a selfish life and not really thinking about all the other people who are affected? So um, I just wanted to share that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God for that testimony. That is awesome. Um, I just ask that everybody would join me as we open up with the word of prayer, please, if you'll bow your heads. <clears throat> Father God, we come before you on tonight, thanking you first and foremost, God, for brand new mercies. Thanking you, O oh God, for allowing us to make it through this day. Um, and make it to this place safely to be able to gather together among other believers to send up a worship to your name, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, for continuing to give us your word, for continuing to, to give us direction as we seek you on a daily basis. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts a word that will help us in the war against the enemy. I thank you, O oh God, for every listener that's tuned in every person that's being touched and blessed by this ministry as you use us as tools oh god to minister to people whether it be through song or through testimonies or through your spoken word oh god we thank you lord for every life that's being touched and every soul that's being saved we thank you lord god for every soul that's being won back over to you and taken away from the army of the enemy we thank you father god for using us to be lights in this dark world and I thank you, Father God, for those of us who have accepted that challenge to walk this walk because we know that it's not easy, God, but in the end, we're victorious. We thank you, Father God, for those who you're going to send our way for us to minister to, O oh God, whether it's through our actions or through conversation. I pray, Father God, when those opportunities present themselves, that you would bring back to our remembrance the words that you have planted inside of us and in our hearts to be able to speak to that brother or sister and reach their souls. I pray, Father God, that we will always be listening for the Holy Spirit to speak to us, O oh God, to be able to recognize those opportunities, to be able to see where people are hurting, to be able to see people, God, the way that you see them and love them anyway, to be able to look beyond people's faults and see their spiritual needs, O oh God, the same way that you did for us. I pray, Lord, that we're reminded when we see people who are in a place of disposition that we will be reminded that we were once there and somebody had to pray for us. Somebody had to go before us because we weren't in a place to be able to go before you on our own. Somebody had to pray for our protection, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that we will be reminded that somebody had to pray for us to be delivered. And I pray that we would extend that same grace and that mercy to other people that we see who are fallen, who are lost, oh God. That we see who are hurting, oh Father. I pray that we will lift them up, Lord God, that we will be willing to go to war on their behalf, Father God, until you deliver them and open their eyes to your word. I pray, Father God, that as you have opened our eyes to the truth of your word, God, that we would accept the things that are hard to our flesh and understand that you correct us, O oh God, because you want to have a close relationship with us, Father, that you want us to be able to come to you and to be able to walk according to your will and according to your word. I pray, O oh God, that those of us that you have on assignment, that we will not lose focus of the task at hand, but that we would stay focused on you and fulfilling the assignment that the enemy comes only to distract us so that we don't get to the finish line. And I pray, Father God, that we will not focus on the process that's taking place, that we will not focus on the current situation or circumstance, but that we will focus on um, getting to the end. And I pray, Father God, that in the times where we don't know what to do and we're lost, that we will not lean onto our own understanding, onto our own wisdom or logic that we've gained from living this life of experience, but that we will rely on you to give us the answers and guidance. And every choice that we make, every decision that has to go forth, even when we feel like we're rushed naturally. So I pray, Father God, that we won't move until you tell us to, O oh God. That we will not make a decision until you give us an answer. And if you don't give us an answer, we will just sit still in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, for every person that is tuned in tonight, that they would hear a word from you, God. I pray that you will soften their hearts and any deaf ears, God. I pray that you will open them. I pray, Father God, that the word would not fall on 
dead soil, but that it will be fertile. That people will accept your word, God, accept the word that's going to go forth and not reject it. And every spirit of rejection or spiritual blindness that has tried to set in your people, Father God, I speak against it right now in the name of Jesus and declare their deliverance and freedom. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm just so excited to hear the word tonight. I'm always excited every week, um, especially because we don't meet on Thursdays anymore. So it seems like it takes forever for a Sunday to get here. And I'm always super excited to hear what the Lord um, has to say. I don't know about any of you, but I tune in every day to hear the daily devotion. And it has truly been an extra blessing until I get here on Sunday evening. If you are not tuning in, um, you are missing out and you should tune in every day at 7 a.m. to hear what the Lord has to say. He's really, um, it's a completely different experience than when you're here on Sunday and you hear the word. I know that sounds weird, but if you tune in and you listen, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's it's almost like this, like, like the Lord giving you a little tidbit to get through the day because he already know what's ahead. It's amazing just to see how sovereign God is because um, every message so far since we started the daily devotion has been relevant for that day, even when I didn't know what was going to happen that day. That just shows you just how sovereign God is, just how God knows the solution before we even know there's a problem. He knows the situation that's going to arise before we even see it in a natural sense. So it's just amazing to me to see, like clockwork, every single message that has gone forth in that daily devotion was literally preparing me in my own situation for what was coming up ahead. And I just thank God for the obedience of this ministry and of Pastor Bolden for going forth in obedience and really allowing God to use him to minister to so many people and really touch people in a way that I'm not sure he realized he's touching people in, but just how God is working through him to really reach people um, in a place where you would not otherwise be reached just in a general setting, so to speak. So I just thank God for that. I'm so excited. Um, I try not to talk a long time because I get excited when we start talking about the, the things that God does and how he just works um, in so many different situations. When you understand, um, looking back on a lot of things, how, you know, you see God moving in a lot of small ways. And then when you step back and you realize how it all came together for the bigger picture. Yes, God. When you understand how it all worked together for this greater good that you didn't even see coming when you were sitting back thinking, God, I don't understand what this is, but I'm going to walk in obedience anyway. I don't understand why you sent this person to get on my nerves today, but you know what? I'm going to lift your name up anyway because you're still worthy even when the devil sent somebody to try to drag me back down that road that I used to be on. You're still God anyway, even though I don't know how this situation is going to turn out and it look bad in a natural sense. When it all come together and you get to the end is when you see just how God was preparing you spiritually to be strong enough. How he was strengthening you in the word. How he was strengthening your character. How he was building you. And then you get to witness how just by you being obedient and walking in that faith how you were a blessing to somebody else who were watching you the whole time when you didn't know why you were going through that. There's one thing that I've learned um, walking with God. The stuff that we go through ain't for us. That's for somebody else. You're getting strong in the long run, but just like what Sister Bowden was saying, you may be the only Bible that somebody see. So if they don't ever open a word, how is your life portraying to them what we say we're supposed to be doing as Christians. How does your actions and your character, even in your conversations, a lot of people don't realize just how slick and subtle the enemy is when it comes to conversations. Even when you're not talking, but you're listening in on the conversation, when you're entertaining it, and people are watching because you're on your job or you're at school and somebody knows that you're supposed to be a Christian, and you don't put that devil in his place, somebody's watching. And so how, is our, how are our lives as Christians um, carried out according to the word? How are we acting? How are we conducting ourselves as wives? How are we conducting ourselves as women and men of God, as husbands, as parents, the way that God commands us to act as his children, as his people? Even something down to our thoughts 
something that we would consider to be small and minute, God has a commandment for it. Anything, everything, even if it's something you think you thought of on your own, which you didn't, if it exalts itself against the knowledge of God, then you're supposed to cast it down. That even means when God speaks something into your life, if he says that you're going to have this job, and then you say, well, Lord, I'm not qualified for this job. Well, you know that ain't the Lord that gave you that thought. If he said you got it, then it's yours. If he said you got that house, then it's yours. The spirit of doubt cancels out any faith that you thought you had. The spirit of fear cancels out any faith that you thought that you had because they can't work together. You cannot have faith and fear at the same time. They don't operate together. That's like a positive and a negative. One of them can be there and the other one got to go. I choose to walk in faith because God has proven to me on more than one occasion that when I walk by faith and I walk in obedience, he's going to do his part. When you just do what you are supposed to be doing, he's not going to always give you the answers in the beginning because he wants to see just how much you're going to trust him. He wants to see just how much faith you got that you said with your mouth. Okay, you got faith? Show me. Show me how far you willing to go without me telling you this is point B. If you just go left like he said to go left, that job might just be waiting for you. If you just go straight and don't look left or right, that house might be at the end of that road. And that's what I've been learning on this walk is that the enemy going to send all kinds of stuff to distract you on the journey because that's his job. He's going to send all kind of hell to break loose on your job, with your kids, with your spouse, the moment you decide you're going to walk by faith, watch how everything starts falling apart in the natural realm. Watch how that devil come. Somebody you don't even know going to get on your nerves and align at Walmart because they're taking too long. Okay, Lord, you told us to operate in patience. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. So that's still going against the Word, even something as small as that. That just goes to show you how subtle the enemy is. It's meant to distract you from your purpose. But if you just keep your eyes on God, if you keep your eyes on that little tidbit that he gave you to stand on, nothing else is going to matter. If you say, God, you know what? I don't understand why I'm going through all of this. I don't understand why every time I take two steps forward, I take 50 million back. But I know that you said that everything works together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And I'm called according to your purpose. So I know that this whole situation is going to work out for my good, even when the enemy made it to work out for my bad. When, even when he's trying to hurt me, even when he sends the people who are supposed to be on my side to come against me, I know, God, that it's working together for my good. That even when I can't tell that it's for my good, it's still working together for my good. Whew, I don't know who that was for, but thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. I'm just excited, y'all. I, I want to sit down, but I can't. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you for working it out for our good. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to, to accept the calling and the purpose on my life so that everything can work together for my good. Because when I was walking on my own, that enemy was tearing me up even when I didn't want to admit it. Tearing me to pieces. It's one thing to be bound and not know you bound. It's a whole nother thing when you get free and you can look back and see just how bound you were. And you didn't even realize you were bound. That is the sovereignty of God. That just goes to show you just how amazing God is. When you didn't have enough sense to be free when you had the ability to be free. The law was still covering you. Still protecting me, God. You still had somebody to go before you on my behalf. When people were coming to me, talking to me, talking to me about the word, and I didn't even want to accept it, I was rejecting it. You still saw fit to deliver me. You still saw fit to open my eyes, God. To be able to stand before your people and say, if God can do a work in me, if he can do a work in me, he can do a work in anybody. Because I know where I was. There's a lot of people sitting around here acting like you woke up saved. I didn't. The Lord had to deliver me. I didn't come here perfect. And I think too many times Christians sit around forgetting that you were out there at one time. 
you didn't know that the enemy had you bound and the Lord had to deliver you just like he got to deliver other people. You didn't wake up like that. You didn't wake up and the Lord said, okay, she perfect. We're going to put her to the side. The Lord said that you have to teach people. You have to be an example. The older people have to be an example. I ain't that old, but I'm going to still be an example. Because that's what I'm called to do with my life. With everything that I do, I'm supposed to do it unto God because I'm a representation of Christ. So even when I'm talking to my siblings, even when I'm entertaining customers on my job, I still have to present it as if I'm doing it unto God. And the way you check yourself, if this was the Lord standing in front of me, would I talk to the Lord like that? Would I have this conversation with God if he was standing right on the side of me? Would I say these words if the Lord was standing right here in front of me? Would I allow my body language to look the way it's looking if the Lord was in front of me? And if you can't answer yes every single time, then that's something that you need to check in yourself. It's something that you need to allow the Lord to show you that's in you so that he can begin a perfect work in you and, and remove all of those things that cause a hindrance from you being able to be close to God, that cause a hindrance from somebody who needs to be touched, who's watching your life and being able to be closer to God. Because the last thing you want to do is be a stumbling block to somebody. The last thing that you want to do is be a hindrance. So I just encourage everybody and challenge, you, challenge us as Christians to be mindful, be watchful of the things that we say, the things that we do, the people that we allow to be in our presence. Because you can say you're a Christian all you want, but if you're hanging with people in the world, and that's what's in you, the world. And you just fooling yourself because the world recognizes their own. There's no way in the world somebody who living with Satan ought to be comfortable around somebody who's supposedly protruding a godly light. That is going to be the, the most uncomfortable situation you can be around. You shouldn't even be comfortable around that. If God has really created in you a renewal of the mind, if all those old things have passed away, you shouldn't have a desire to even do the same things that you were doing before God delivered you. Hey Amen. I'm going to sit down. Now. Um, I just had something that I wanted to share real quick. I felt led to share this. Um, the other day while I was in um, class, we just happened to be taking a break because we were doing a lot of things, and we usually take breaks in the middle towards the end of class. And I just happened to be sitting behind this boy, and he turned around and was talking with me about um, the math homework, and I was explaining to him what we were supposed to do. Then I seen that he had, like, some kind of tattoo on his arm and it was uh it was a cross and it had Jesus on. I said, So you're a Christian? He was like, uh he said, Yeah, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian for seven years now and I'm trying my best to live for the Lord and I believe that I'm going to heaven. I remember he just kept going, you know, I was sitting there listening to him like, Wow, that's that's amazing that he's a Christian and he's in high school and you know, in most high schools being a Christian is not the popular thing. And all of a sudden, this girl, she turned to him. She said, you're not a Christian. You got a lot of nerve to proclaim that. He's like, what do you mean? And he was, she was like, well, I read a few times. She said, I'm, I might not be a Christian, but I read in the Bible that you're supposed to listen to your elders and obey your parents and honor them. She was like, well, if you're such a Christian, why are you always getting put out of class? Why are you always getting written up? Why are you always cussing the teachers out? You proclaim to be a Christian, but you study doing things that sinners do. And I remember I was thinking to myself, like, if you proclaim to be a Christian, it is a very dangerous thing to proclaim to be a Christian, but then you're doing everything else that everybody in the world is doing. Because the day that you proclaim that I am a Christian, people are going to watch you. 
And when they watch you and they see that you're doing everything else the world is doing, they're like, you know, you, you're not a Christian. They just dismiss you altogether. And you're hurting folks when you do that. And that, like, it really hurt me to the core. Because I started thinking, like, I'm over here proclaiming to be a Christian, and I'm over here still doing the things that the people in the world are doing. And I started asking the Lord, Lord, how many people have I been a stumbling block to? And I thought about all the times that I had so many opportunities to profess his name. And to show people what a Christian is like. But instead, I led them down the wrong road. And I asked myself, Lord, how many people have I led to hell today? How many people could I have helped to follow you today? And I think about that almost every day. I'm like, Lord. And that's just all I got to say today. If you're going to proclaim to be a Christian, just be one. Don't try to impress people. Don't try to please people because people will never be pleased nor will they ever be satisfied. And I had to learn that the hard way. And when you proclaim to be a Christian, just be mindful that other people are watching you when you don't think they're watching. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people who are watching you. And you can lead them into so many directions all because you decided to make one decision one day. Amen. I want to say greetings to everyone. We thank you all for joining us today. And that we pray and we know that you've been blessed so far by what you've heard, by what the Holy Spirit had to say. And if you notice, there's one common theme to live the life that you're talking about to live the life that you are proclaiming, you see, because whether we believe it or not, people are watching. And that's for somebody today that we're, you know, it, it's a dangerous thing not to live according to God's word, especially when we're proclaiming to be a Christian. My wife, I think it was, was it Friday or uh, Thursday? What day was it? Somebody recognized you. And they, Thursday. it was Thursday. They said, television, right? And she was like, what? The television, your husband. He's on t your husband's a preacher. He's on television. I, sometimes I see you with him. Now, <laughs> my wife, uh, on her way home from work, from the time she get off, and even at work, because people have told her they've seen us on TV, or, you know, and there's a lot of opportunity there to be offended. If you have a job, you know what I'm talking about, you know. And so... Uh, People are watching, even when you don't, my wife don't know who this man was. Uh, several years ago, when I lived in Clarksville, I was on TV up there and uh, took, the, took my vehicle to get it washed at this one place where, you know, they would, they wash it while you're sitting inside of it. And, of course, you know, a couple of guys were out cursing and uh, I was, it was hot that day and uh, I wasn't feeling too well and it seemed like they weren't in a hurry, so I had an opportunity to get frustrated and, and upset and things like that, except I didn't. I just turned on some praise and worship music and just praised the Lord there while I was sitting there. And somebody walked up, 
And uh, I heard him tell the, uh, the two guys that were washing my vehicle, hey, that's a preacher that's sitting in that car. Y'all tone that down. And uh, he knocked on the window. He said, hey, aren't you that preacher on TV? I said, yeah, I'm him. They said, yeah, I watch you. And then, uh, you know, he's like, I told y'all, that's a preacher. Y'all don't, y'all need to quit cursing. And it just showed me, now, I didn't, you know, I've been on TV for a little while up there. And I wasn't thinking anybody would recognize, you know, me or anything like that. But apparently he did. And it just shows you, you know, people will sit back and they will watch you because they want to know the God you're professing to serve. Does he have the power to actually change them? People want to know that it's real. I mean, think about it. That's the way people are in, even in relationships. People, you know, people aren't, most people don't want to jump in with both feet into a relationship. They want to check to make sure this person's real. They even got agencies out there now that's, that's doing background checks on people, you know. And my question to you is, if the world did a background check on you since you proclaimed Christ, how would, well, how would you turn out, you see? You see? If you were charged with being a Christian, would you be found guilty of it? Would there be enough evidence to show? You see, it's time out for Christians saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I, 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 God's grace cover me. And God, yeah, his grace does cover you. But you know what? There's some fruit there that should be evident there. Amen. There should be a difference there, you see. And, and God, when he comes to live on the inside of us, there is a difference. There is a difference, you see that. And when we stop seeing that difference, that's when it's time for us to go and check ourselves and, and see what's going on there. You see that. And the devil is very subtle with it. He's very subtle if we're not careful. Amen.